Hi everyone and welcome to Brick Arena and in this video and possibly future videos I'm going to be doing a vlog for you guys. I thought it would be interesting for you to get an insight behind the scenes of running a full-time Lego business selling on Bricklink, Brick Owl and eBay. Now if you see anything of interest during the vlog and you've got any questions, comments, leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. So let's get on with the vlog. So it's uh, Monday morning and I'm just checking on orders. So I've got 11 orders to ship and one to invoice. So uh, let's have a, uh, a quick look at that. Which is, uh, let me see, 437 items in 120 lots. And uh, then on Brick Owl, over here we have got 270 lot uh, sorry 270 items in just uh, 19 lots and then let's have a look on on eBay we've got uh, six orders to ship on eBay uh, so I'm just gonna go back to Bricklink and uh, get this order invoiced and it's going to uh, Switzerland so I'm just gonna get a price here for shipping to Switzerland it's only gonna be 100 grams so that is going to be three pounds and five pence plus any handling, of course. But I always um, only charge the exact shipping amount. I don't overcharge on shipping at all. Of course, if you want to add a bit of margin into that, that's completely up to you. But it's not uh, part of my business model. So anyway, uh, best get cracking on uh, printing out these orders and get a pick in. Just thought I'd take a quick look at this order that's to go to Switzerland. And this is for a selection of the chocolate frog uh, tiles that come in uh, the Harry Potter sets. And I think this is quite an unusual thing for Lego to do now where they're putting in random tiles into sets. So you're not guaranteed to get the same tiles in any particular set. You'll just get a random assortment from the various sets that contain these tiles. Um, but these seem to be selling really well because everybody wants to collect all of the tiles. So nice little order off to Switzerland. So a quick look at this. One of the things that um, I do when I'm packing my orders is, uh, you know, usually you want some background music uh, or, or something. But I listen to lots and lots of of podcasts as well as listening to, to music. So I'm going to be starting my day listening to the Mac Power users. Of course, I'm a Mac user, not a PC user. And uh, this is one of my favourite shows and always the first thing I do on a Monday morning is uh, listen to this particular podcast. Um, anyone who out there who uses a Mac, it's a great, great podcast to listen to. So here's a cool little order going out. Um, this is one of the um, old um, grey elephants. Um, goes for thirty-five pounds, so not a bad little sale. I uh, don't find these too often. It's the only one I've ever had, um, and um, at one point would have been tempted to keep this for myself, but now being a Bricklink seller, it's all about um, moving things on and making some money. So, bye bye, Mr. Elephant. 
So here's an order um, for those of you who I've seen in the past question, you know, whether stickers are worth keeping uh, and worth selling. They do sell. They sell very, very often. And um, they're, they're definitely um, things that you should be keeping and should be put in for sale if you're not already. Now, that said, um, you know, Running a store is all about organization and having things um, easy to find. And I have to say, this is one area that I am terrible at. Um, so just to show you what I'm going to do, I am going to be putting everything into uh, a folder here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be putting them into numbered um, A4 size um, pockets here. But what do I do right now? Right now, this is it. This is the sticker drawer. So now I have to go through my stickers and find these. It's actually not that bad. It takes you know, a minute or two, but it's really not that bad, but it is an area that I do badly need to improve on. So that's a job for maybe this week. Just thought I'd mention a quick tip, um, and that is that when I'm packing my orders, I input them into my shipping system, which for me in the UK is uh, Royal Mail's click and drop system. And the thing is that um, when I'm doing this, I enter all of my packages uh, and then at the end of the day, I batch them into weight. And so sometimes at the end of the day, of course, it's difficult to know what the weight was of the, of the package that you're actually sending. So the way I do that is in the click and drop system, uh, down at the bottom here is there is something called the custom tag field. So I use this to define um, what the package type is. And the way I do that is I'll put one LL, whoops, one LL. So first class large letter. And then I'll put in this case 100, which is uh, 100 gram first class large letter. Uh, and then I'll just save that order. So then um, when you come through to the dashboard and the list of orders, you can see in the list here your tag. So that at the end of the day, when I come to batch process all of my orders, I just select all of the ones that are uh, first class large letter and I apply the the postage en masse to all of those um same categories or all of those same tags and it saves loads of time um at least in my opinion so that's what i do um if you've got any other uh ways of doing that maybe leave a comment let me know what you're doing uh... So it's a much quieter day today on uh, Bricklink with just four orders and just a couple on Brick Owl as well. So we're continuing uh, with the midweek sort of quiet periods that we seem to be getting in the UK at the moment, probably down to kids school holidays and uh, and everything else. Um, but you know i'm sure it'll pick up and i'll be spending my time on building up the the store inventory ready to um get things moving when everybody's back buying lego so here's an order for uh europe with the new uh vat and you're gonna get a message like this telling you that import vat is being paid by the uh, marketplace um, so the customers actually paid VAT on this order already and you need to inform um, your shipper the IOSS number which I've blurred out here um, 
so that it gets apportioned uh, to the appropriate marketplace. And the way that you have to deal with this, or so a lot of people are saying, is that you need to enclose the invoice um, for this order on the outside of the packet. And so what I'm uh, going to do, although to be honest, I'm not convinced this needs to be done, but I'm gonna be putting this uh, invoice into this sealed bag and putting it on the outside of the envelope. And I'm told that the customs documents need to go on the outside of the parcel so that customs can access the documents to check that the VAT's being paid, etc. It's a pain in the butt um, for everybody, but uh, that's life now, unfortunately. So this is what it looks like now that it's stuck on the envelope. And one of the pains is that you need to put it in a big enough envelope uh, to fit the actual um, documents on. I haven't actually put the label on here yet, um, but otherwise this could have fit in a packet half the size of this. So again, um, it's, it's a real pain, but it uh, has to be done. So just got today's post and there are two packages, uh, both are, I think from eBay. I've opened the packs just to make it easier because I've only got one hand, uh, but not actually looked inside yet. So let's have a little, little look to see what we got in here. Okay, so um, these, as I said, were all from eBay, and I think this one is three different lots. One of them, just a bunch of uh, Simpsons stuff that was a reasonable price, and these are just to kind of restock up on, on sort of general figures uh, to put into the store. Uh, this one here, mix of all sorts in here. Um, some some Batman movie, some uh, collectible minifigures, some Star Wars, etc. And then this one, another mixed bag. And this was the one I really came for. So I'm hoping that one's a genuine one when I open it. But that one alone was well worth the price I paid for this. And of course, by buying three different lots from the same seller, I got combined postage. So um those will hopefully be okay and then this next one uh, it's another lot of uh mini figs uh, what have we got in here again some collectible mini figs some animals um some dimensions slash uh lord of the rings i seem to remember um what else have we got inside uh, uh this one was uh, another one from the uh batman uh movie i, I think this one's worth about five or six quid which again made the whole thing uh worthwhile so yeah nice couple of little packs i'll uh, get those figures sorted and get them listed so late order from eBay just came in for this uh, little guy. And I've got to say these llamas were great little sellers. This is actually the last one I've got now. Um, but they were great little sellers on eBay in particular. So um, yeah, well worth picking up. So right on the back of that um, eBay order in flies another one. Uh, just another little order, but I always like to get these orders um, pretty much straight out, really just because from a customer service point of view. So it's now, it's what, 20 to 4 in the afternoon, and I usually take my post to the depot at about 4.30. Um, but if I get any late orders, I always like to try and get them out that day, and usually... The customer's going to get them tomorrow, which means it's a less than a 24-hour turnaround. So 
their next order might be a big order. So um, well worth um, doing, I think, as long as you're not in the middle of anything um, super time consuming, um, it's worth stopping, picking the order and getting it out. Just wanted to show you guys that um, I've hit 17 orders today, which is, is, you know, not amazing, but not too bad either. But the main point of showing you this is when we looked this morning at orders, there was only something like seven. So the rest have come in throughout the day. So don't get too hung up on what you have at the start of the day. At least I don't. Um, and uh, I'll keep working on orders as they come in throughout the day and I'll try and get them out that day. Um, if they're particularly big orders, big lot counts, then they may have to wait until tomorrow. But even if an order comes in at 3, 3.30 in the afternoon, I can typically get it out the same day. So just started printing labels, um, ready to get um, put on the parcels to go out to the post. It's uh, 4.15. Uh, in the afternoon and I'll get these done straight off to the post office. So just a couple of orders uh, this morning on Bricklink and a couple on uh, Brick Owl but also um, a sale on um, eBay what this shows here, just got one in for just a couple of figures here. Now, I only uploaded those um, late last night. Um, these are a couple of packages I got in from eBay yesterday. Nothing super exciting, nothing worth more than four or five pound. But you can see how it does drive uh, sales uh, immediately. Uh, so um, well worth, um, you know, getting things into the store generating some some interest unfortunately in this case they didn't buy anything else uh, besides the figures but you know um so what you know they're moving these figures on nice and quickly getting a a quick return on the uh, on the money invested so i've got a very strange situation going on here on eBay for this uh, sailboat promotional set that appears to have sold for £27.46 and the odd thing about that is that I had this listed for £32.95 and I had no offers listed or anything so I've contacted eBay and they tell me that the guy made a best offer which was accepted even though I didn't have a best offer option on the listing. And the best they can tell me to do is to contact my buyer and ask them to pay the additional amount or to cancel the item. Now, if this is eBay's fault, I'd expect them to pay me the difference. Um, the customer shouldn't be penalised for the system being faulty and accepting an offer when there's no best offer on it. So in my opinion, this is poor customer service, makes me look bad as the, the seller when in fact it's eBay's fault. Um, so let's see this how this pans out. So I'm just finishing off parting out three of this Harry Potter set. And I'd forgot to mention that I did pick up some sets at the weekend. Now, this is something I'd normally do in a Lego haul. Uh, this was all from the Lego store uh, last Saturday. And I picked up uh, mostly sort of three of each of the uh, various Harry Potter sets with the uh, anniversary minifigures in and um, got a little bit of a discount on them. And, um, and points of course and uh, picked up also a few of these everyone is awesome sets so they'll be hitting the stores very soon uh, oh and an assembly square uh, to go with another one that I've got which I'll be parting out 
So I'm just parting out some of the Everyone Is Awesome sets. And I'm not really very happy with uh, the way that a lot of the minifig torsos are coming out. Now, it's going to be really hard to pick this up on camera, but I don't know if you can see, but there's lots and lots of torsos in particular um, where there's lots of little nicks and, and scratches. And uh, I'm really not going to be very happy about sending them to customers and um not really sure what to do about it to be honest with you um difficult to pick them up on all of them but there is a lot of them you just gotta sort of catch it in the right light to see them and i think you can see it best on on some of these up here but not very happy at all Now, one of the issues of um, loading parts over time is that you need to make sure that your uh, the price that, you, that you've listed for doesn't get out of date. So, in, in other words, if you're listing parts when they, they're new out, um, then you may be demanding a high price. But six months later, they're not going to be attracting the same price. And if you haven't updated those prices, then you're going to be in trouble. So I'm using a brick store here to update my entire inventory to the um, to the price that I want to list them at, which is based around the um, average selling price. And it's something I would recommend you do on a on a regular basis. Otherwise, some of your prices are going to be very outdated and may not attract any buyers. So something that I've started doing uh, recently, and I should have done this uh, probably much sooner, is just to keep an upload log. Um, so I don't upload through Bricklink. Um, I use Brickstore to, to upload, and uh, I just find it much, much better. Um, so I need to keep track separately what parts I've uploaded. So... Um, uh, it just gives me a better idea of how I'm getting on. And so over the last month, I can see, not quite a month actually, um, it's it, it's coming up to a month. And you can see that I have uploaded um, 28,500 parts across 2,300 lots for a, adding a value of about £5,000 to uh, inventory and that's uh, 755 new lots which you know I'm I'm okay with um, I kind of like it to be more but those are mostly new parts there's some used in here so I'm, I'm tracking what's new what's what's used and I will be trying to add a lot of uh, used uh, parts in the near future. But I think it's useful to keep an upload log like this. So I'm going to keep it going for a while and uh, see how useful it really is. So a couple of days ago, I picked up a new item that I'm going to be using in the store. So let's get this built and I'll show you what it is. And here we are with the finished thing. So it's obviously a trolley. Um, I'm figuring that um, this is going to be uh, useful in moving from one end of my room to the other. As some of you will know, I've got a pretty long room. And that means that uh, when I get to one end, I don't want to be coming backwards and forwards to the desk to drop parts off so the intention is to walk up with the trolley come up here this is all going to be racked out uh, this is the next extension area and then i'm going to be picking parts out of this area put them onto the tray the trolley rather and then go back up to the desk when the trolley is full and not 
backwards and forwards constantly. So hopefully that's a good addition. Um, I know that there's some better trolleys out there and a lot of the guys, uh, particularly the American sellers with their huge basements have nice trolleys. Um, I like this one because it's quite tall, so it's quite easy to just get a grip on and, um, and to push. And um, it's got some nice uh, lips on the, uh, on the trays here to hold things in a little bit. And of course the see-through shelf on the top is quite nice as well. So uh, this will be really useful. Might end up getting some sort of containers or something to hang off the, the sides and put bags in. Not quite sure yet how I'm going to use it, but I am sure it will be useful when I make uh, the move. And now I'm just about to order cabinets. So all of these cabinets that you see on this wall, which are 60 draw units, um, which are slightly different to, to these. They're both Reiko, but these ones are the 44 draw with the um, different size draws in the units. I'm going to take these 60s and mount them in three rows into that alcove there. So there'll be 15, there's 15 of them now, 15 mounted in three rows on the alcove. And then this wall is going to be filled with another 22 of these Reiko units that I've uh, just had a quote for and uh, I'm just about to order, just wait, waiting for them to ring me back to take payment and uh, they'll be here next week. So a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm.